Hello and welcome to the Global Electronics Report. It's Friday, May 26th, and my name is David Burford. Today's program is sponsored by Twin International. Nokia and Apple have settled a litigation case disputing intellectual property. The two companies have agreed a multi-year patent license. Nokia's chief legal officer, Maria Vasilona, said that the relationship has moved from being adversaries in court to business partners working for the benefit of the customers. Under the agreement, Nokia will provide certain network infrastructure products and services to Apple. Apple, in return, will continue to carry Nokia's digital health products. They are also exploring future collaboration in digital health initiatives. Peters Laboratories have announced a change in their management. Towards the end of last year, Dr. Manfred Super, head of research at Peters, stepped down. Since 1998, he was responsible for the development of numerous high-tech coatings for electronics. He authored the book, Conformal Coatings for Electronics Applications, officially recognised as a comprehensive technical reference book. He is also internationally renowned as a consultant and speaker. Dr. Super's successor is his former deputy, Detlev Schust, well known for his reputation among PCB manufacturers and OEM companies, mainly through premium Alpima solder resists. Join me after a quick break for more electronic stories. Global SMT and Packaging was last week attending the SMT Hybrid Packaging Show in Nuremberg, visiting many booths of the biggest names in the industry. Some of the highlights included the industry's fastest pick and place machine from Yamaha that boasts an amazing speed of 200,000 CPH. Cyber Optics discussed their CyberGauge CG360 that utilizes technology from their AOI and SBI platforms. The machine is a metrology-based tool that makes a 360-degree view using blue light projection on top and bottom, whilst rotating the object. Ream Thermal Systems theme for the show was VConnectU, you, the emphasis being the importance of all machines being connected. Their Vicon software utilizes touchscreen interface and production managers can use an app on their smartphones for monitoring the line. Digital motors and multiple sensors within can provide data in real time for preventative maintenance and as a quality gate. Video interviews of these products plus more from the show floor will be available to view soon. This week saw the Cleaning and Contamination Conference in Amsterdam. Co-organised by the Smart Group and the SNTA, the conference started with a workshop on cleaning printed circuit assemblies, design and process control, presented by instructors Bob Willis, Helmut Weigart of Zestron Europe and Mike Bixerman of Kaiser Corporation. On the second and third days, many topics were discussed, such as analysing cleaning results and potential damage risks when cleaning process is not optimal, conformal coating technologies to protect electronics in high temperature environments, and optimization of chemistry for a vapor phase process for defluxing no clean lead free materials. The conference was attended by Trevor Galbraith, Global SMT and Packaging's editor in chief, and he spoke with two of the contributors. We're standing here today at the Cleaning and Contamination Conference here in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, it's a joint conference organized by the Smart Group uh, and, of course, SMTA in the United States. Uh, one of the co-organizers here is uh, Mike Bixman from Kaizen Corporation. Uh, welcome, Mike. Thank you, Trevor. Glad to be here. Yeah. Some, some really interesting topics discussed uh, here in this morning's session. Um, some of the key points I want to talk about, of course, is uh, low standoffs, uh, which is one of your sweet spots. Um, what are the key challenges that we're up against there? Well, if you look at leadless components, specifically like uh, bottom terminated components, you've got a large amount of solder trapped underneath or, or that's placed underneath the component. Mm -hmm. 
and you have some very narrow spaces between your power and ground. And so what can happen is, is, is these are soldered on planar surfaces. Mm -hmm. And one of the real challenges is a standoff gap. As that standoff gap reduces, the level of residue underneath that device increases. But, right, but, but there's no um, standards to say what that standoff gap should be at this point. No, there's not. Um, there is work, and, and, and standoff is a very difficult um, standard to, to achieve because as a component gets smaller, you would traditionally print a smaller level or thickness of solder paste onto that board. It would be a finer. Um, right. like a type 6 solder paste, right. something of that sort. And, and, but I think one of the areas that we have looked at is, is um, and, and one of the challenges is if you do have residue, are you blocking the channels for your activators and your flux to outgas? And so that's an area where different design modifications are being looked at. You right. know, can you put like a solder uh, mass window with a via to outgas that residue, so if you trap it, it's mm -hmm. less problematic. Okay. Right, I mean, what would you say is the recommended standoff gap we should have? We would like to see a standoff gap between 75 and 125 microns, which would be three to three to five mils. Okay, good. Okay, well, it looks like they're about to start the afternoon session, so I think we'll leave it there and maybe come back to talk to you later, but thanks for talking to us just now. Okay, thanks, Trevor. Thank you. So I'm joined now by uh, Karthik Vijay from Indium Corporation, who gave one of the presentations this morning on some of the uh, stricter regulations that are coming into the automotive world. Uh, Karthik, can you give us uh, an overview of, of really what's happening there? Sure. Hi, Trevor. What we're seeing in automotive is with more electrification of units, eventually where the goal is to move to the autonomous car, you know, all systems are being electrified. That means higher voltages uh, and more stringent electrical reliability requirements because of higher power fluxes. Towards that, you know, there's a lot of work uh, being done in this aspect. And from a flux technology standpoint, what used to be normal for fluxes in terms of electrical reliability was a standard IPC J standard 004B SAR test that took a, a normal B24 coupon, mm -hmm. subjected to, you know, salt paste that was reflowed, and then it was subject to 168 hours or seven days for <clears throat> uh, 90 90% relative humidity, 40 degrees Celsius for a spacing of 0.5 millimeters. Right. What we're seeing today is you know, the requirements have become a lot more stringent, where the spacing has reduced to 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter mm -hmm. compared to 0.5 millimeter. The minimum SAR threshold of 100 mega ohms, which can go up to a minimum of 5,000 mega ohms, mm -hmm. the 168 hours has gone up to 500 to 1,000 hours, mm -hmm. and the voltage has gone up from 5 volts to 10 to 50 volts. So obviously, all of this is pushing the envelope in terms of a no clean flux being able to perform for these conditions mm -hmm. and still be inert, non hygroscopic, benign, and not, you know, uh, uh, conduct and cause dendritic growth and eventual corrosion and failure right. of the product. Right. Okay, well, that's, that's a huge change in, in the requirements that uh, are being driven by, by the automotive industry. Um, another topic that I noticed here this morning, uh, there's an awful lot of talk about SIR testing, but uh, people are moving away from rose testing. Um, why is that? I'm not so sure if they're completely moving away from rose, but they're certainly a lot of visibility on how best to identify residue mm -hmm. and secondly what that residue does mm -hmm. with the end electrical reliability mm -hmm. because we are talking about a no clean process uh, for the most part in the automotive context at least and in these cases they are not going to remove the residue mm -hmm. so if there's residues on the board what does it do to the electrical reliability so measuring Electrical reliability is one thing, but knowing what's left behind uh, on the board is, is the basis. And towards that, rose is one aspect, but obviously there are other methods like iron chromatography yep. and other aspects. being Because at the end of the day, you've got this ionics number, mm -hmm. which is being pushed down again um, by the, the automotive OEMs. In the one, the, and that number is... The number being, uh, you know, what we're hearing is 1.56 micrograms right. per square centimeter. So for this, we need to know what's left behind. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, prose is one aspect of measurement. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, it's fascinating stuff. Uh, so I, I want to thank you for joining us today and uh, thank you for giving a great presentation this morning. Sure. Thanks, Trevor. That's it for this week. Thank you to our sponsors, Twin International, Bubble Free Potting, from the industry leader in benchtop to fully inline potting under vacuum. Check back next week for more top stories from around the electronics world.